Okay, so we've been talking about uh, control structures. Uh, we know of one of them, um, the if-else um, conditional execution. Control structures in general, just generally speaking, it's a general computer science idea, they, uh, the, the default flow of execution of a program uh, is top-down sequential, left to right, top-down sequential, where every line executes one after the other, in sequence, top-down. Sometimes we don't always want to do that, and um, control structures allow us to modify that default execution, flow of execution. Um, you'll, you'll, if you think about it a little bit, that's what the if-else has done for us, right? It allows us to conditionally execute, so we may or may not execute a particular um, statement based on the outcome of the condition. Right? So we can skip certain uh, lines of code that, that are written, but we don't want to execute, or may. We may or may not want to execute. So um, the if-else structure is an example of a, uh, a control structure. It, 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 specifically, that particular control structure is called a selection structure. There are times when uh, we, we'd like to execute the same statement or some statement that's written in our program multiple times, some number of times, not just one or not, right? Which would be the, what the if else is. So the if else, you, you can kind of read it in English. You would read it kind of like, if it's raining outside, wear a raincoat. So you would only wear a raincoat in the event that it's raining. That it's true that the condition uh, that the tr the condition it's raining outside is true. Um, sometimes we would like to say things differently, like maybe I'll be silly and say wear raincoat ten times. So we may like to keep count of how many times wear raincoat has happened that we've worn a raincoat. And when we hit 10 times, we don't wear a raincoat anymore. It's over, right? So we're, we're counting some number of iterations, what are known as iterations. So we're going to need some kind of a control structure to do that because by default, we can't go backwards and, and execute code over and over and over again, you know, like in a loop. So we're going to need something called a, a repetition structure right? that allows us to do that, uh, go back and, and execute the same code over and over again. So um, Python and many other languages have um, a set of repetition structures. Um, there's a number of ways to, to perform repetition. We could use a loop mechanism, which would be in Python and many other languages, uh, a while loop or a for loop. And we could also use a, a different kind of mechanism called uh, recursion. Uh, which we may or may not get into this semester. Uh, just another way to report, to perform an operation repetitively. So um, we're going to here now move into the repetition structures, the looping mechanisms uh, that exist in Python and many other languages. I like to keep making that clear that um, you know, many of these concepts exist throughout languages and we'll see the same thing over and over again um, if, if we were if, when we if we when we get to recursion that would be the likely way that scheme would would uh, try to perform uh, repetition um, but many other languages want to use this, could use either kind of uh, basic structure either a repetition structure or a, a looping mechanism or um, a recursive uh, procedure but we're, not, we're going to work on looping mechanisms right now, so we'll start with the while loop, and I've got a couple examples written up that I'll do in this video, and then in the next video we'll do the for um, structure, and just see what they look like. So let's jump over to Thani and see what we have going on here. What do I have going on here? I don't know. So I've put together a couple of examples so I could show you uh, how this works. Um, I wrap them up in a function, as you can see. I've, I'm reusing that same old my function. <laughs> That's still in the same old file, hello world, that I was using before. No big deal. I just overwrote the stuff I had. 
All right, so you, you want, I just want to be clear that you, you do not need to have these loops written up in a function. It just makes it convenient for me to uh, do this video or do some videos. So the, the looping mechanism itself is, well, we're going to include all of it, is all of this. So I could cut this right here and paste it and, and just execute it with the, with the play button. I could do that too. But I'm choosing, um, I have several different examples. So I wanted to name those examples and be able to call, I'll name them by giving them a function, name, putting them in a function and give each function a different name. Then I can call each function as we get to it. And we can see the results of, of the execution of the loop. So I just want to be clear that you don't have to put these in a function. Right? Remember, you put anything you want in a function, and it just so happened to be convenient for me to do it that way right now. So we'll start with the simplest example that I have, or that I can think of. Uh, and here's the, the actual looping part of this thing, the, things, the parts that are necessary. Uh, we'll start with, there's three things that every loop's going to need. It's going to need somewhere to start the loop. Let me jump back here for a second. You're going to have to somewhere to start the loop, like uh, maybe start at zero and we'll count to 10 or something like that, which is kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to do on these. Um, so we'll need a starting place. Let's just be very general about the language, and then I'll give you the specifics as we look at uh, the individual examples. So we'll need some sort of a starting place, some sort of an ending place, and some way to get from the start to the end, right? And so the ending place will be a condition. And when that condition becomes false, we'll break out of the loop. So we'll start somewhere. We'll have something inside the loop that's, that's helping drive us toward forcing that condition to become false. And uh, then there's a condition, right? The stopping point. Um, so let's jump on back in here and take a look at how I have these set up. So this is my starting place. I've created a... Oops, that I didn't mean to do. Oh, here I am. I'm on the wrong street. I've, start, I've created a variable here called x. I made up that variable name. So here in Python, we don't need uh, data types in front. In other languages, you would. So if we were in C, C++, Java, I might do int space x, right? So I have to de declare the variable and initialize it or assign something to it. The equal sign, remember, is an assignment operator. It's not determining equivalency. The assignment operator always assigns the right-hand side of that operator, the right-hand operand, to the left-hand operand. So zero is being placed into x. You cannot write that the other way around. Right? Zero equals x is not valid. <laughs> Because you'd be attempting to place whatever's in the variable x, which would be on this side in that case, into the digit zero, the integer zero. So you're, you're, you're kind of, uh, this is philosophical we're getting into here, but you'd be trying to change the underlying meaning of zero. And you can't do that. Or any other number. So you assignment always happens right to left. So we've declared a variable just by using its name. I made up the name call it anything I want. That's the declaration. The assignment happens right here with the assignment operator equals. So now x, we'll think of x as a box, a named storage location. And that box now contains the value zero, the integer zero. So anytime I, I refer to the, the, the box's name, in this case x, I'm going to receive the value that's contained in that box. So if I had placed a five into the X, then I would, I would get, every time I use the word, uh, the variable name X, like here in this print, this print statement, I'm trying to say print X. Well, what I'm saying there really is print the contents of the variable X. So I'll print, in the case that we have listed here at this exact moment in time where X has a zero in it, a zero will print, right? So here I am now, I'm going to move to the next line here, and there's a condition there, right? We know conditions exist whenever there's a relational operator, like less than, greater than, 
equal to, which will be specified as, if we're checking for equivalency, as, a, as opposed to the notion of assigning a value to some variable, which is the equal. Equivalency would be equals equals. So that's, um, you, you just do two equal signs. So that would be say the left hand side is the left hand side equivalent to the right hand side if I used equals equals. I know I just threw that right in the middle of some code, but I just wanted to be sure that you kind of knew that. Don't worry about these other functions yet. We're going to go through them as well. We're just focusing on this function. So we have this new variable x. It has the value 0 stored in it at the moment while is a keyword. So it starts uh, the loop. Right? So as long as, I'm going to, in English I might rewrite this and say, as long as the value contained in x is less than 20, then do the body of the loop, which is this part of the loop. Now in Python, we're, we are, are describing the body, the, the statements that are controlled by the loop, um, through the indentation. So you want at least two. I like two, but I see uh, whenever I put only two, the assistant over here in, in um, Thani doesn't like two only. It, it always says you should really use four. <laughs> it doesn't have a problem executing and uh, recognizing the indentation that I have when I use two. It just, for some reason, is trying to get me to use four. So the fact that these are indented, these two lines here, are indented under the while indicate that they're being controlled by the while as long as x is less than 20 these two statements should execute and they will execute top down sequentially right they're not going to execute simultaneously or anything like that first line four here will execute in the event that this is true, as long as this is true, this will execute and then this will execute. And then the test will happen. And if it's true, then this will execute and then this will execute and then the test will happen. And then this will execute and this will execute. Okay, so you get the pattern. So we're effectively looping. That's what's happening here. Okay, so if we do nothing, we assign a zero to x, we say, is zero less to affect, I can, I can just replace x with the zero in my mind, right? Because that's what's happening in the machine. Whatever the value is of x, that's the condition that's going to be tested. So as long as zero is less than 20, here, really we should be saying, as long as the value of the variable x contained in the variable x is less than 20, and we know that's zero at the moment, if we did not have this statement, then we would print zero. And that's the end of the loop, right? So at the end of the loop, we come back up and do the test again. And we would have while, and what's the contents of the variable x? Nothing, if this, if this line is not here, right? then it's still zero in x, right? We've not done anything to it. So zero is less than 20 is true. So therefore the body would execute, this would be the only line if this was missing or delete it, if I deleted that. So we would print zero and come back up and do the test. Zero less than 20, true. So do print, zero. So now this is going to just spin, right? It's gonna keep testing and printing, testing and printing. I'm ignoring this. It's important to recognize in this conversation that I'm pretending that this line does not exist to show why that line is necessary. <laughs> All right. What I have is the test, so I know the ending condition. When this thing finally fails, this right here, when x is no longer less than 20, then we will not execute the body of the loop any longer, right? But as long as x is in fact less than 20, the value of the variable, the contents of the variable x is less than 20, then we keep executing the body of the loop do it again and again and again and again until this fails, right? So in the case that this line is missing, line four, then we're going to just keep doing the same thing over and over again, right? Because X is always zero. Nothing, we haven't done anything 
to make X become any closer to causing this to fail. And what would cause it to fail? Well, if X became 20, because 20 would no longer be less than 20, right? So that would cause a failure, in which case of this condition, these would not execute, or as long as we're pretending that this is not here anymore, this would not execute, and we would fall out of the function, the body, and it turns out the body of the while loop here, the while loop that I have, is the only thing in the function, so we would fall out of the function as well. The function would be over. And this is a different function. It's not going to execute. So I need some way to get this test to fail, or we're going to be stuck in an infinite loop. So the way I'm going to do that, I know we started, we initialized X. We're going to call X the the looping, the loop variable. Okay, so it's the it's the variable that controls the looping mechanism. So as long as that those contents are less than 20, keep doing stuff, right? And we'll just keep flipping around here. So I need some way to get zero to move to 20. So the way I'm going to do that is increment x one step at a time. And this is the update on the loop variable, which is x. This is how I'm modifying the loop variable to try and get it closer to 20 so that eventually it will become 20 and cause the loop to fail, right? So remember the assignment operator works right to left. So I need to, before the assignment can happen, we need to know what this is, what this evaluates to. And so it's going to take the contents of the, we're taking our first loop here, right? We just assigned x to a zero to x. We're, we just evaluated while zero is less than 20 is true. So we entered the body of the loop. So now we say into the variable x, into the variable x, place the evaluation of the contents of the current contents of the variable x plus one. So it's zero plus one is one. So that you can think of this highlighted area as just being replaced by the integer one, one assigned to x. So now x no longer has a zero in it from the initialization. I just updated it. I incremented it. I incremented it by one integer by one step All right so when we print here we're not going to print zero right? because we're going to print the contents of, of the variable x but the variable x currently has a one in it so we're going to print one and then that's the end of the loop right so we come on back up to the while we do not come back all the way up to here that's over the while loop starts at the keyword while right even though the variable exists outside of the loop was created outside of the loop when we come up from print we're only going to come up to there and then we, we move down and we're looping in that blue area that's that's all the loop is going to loop through this I, I missed that closing parenthesis so that's the loop body well it's the whole loop all right so this is not going to happen over and over again that only happens once and then we enter the loop so the very initial test x does have the value zero but from then on it does not all right and so each time i iterate i'm going to take we're going to do the test this we just incremented it to one we print one we come back around and we do the test again is one less than 20 yes it is so we execute the body of the loop one plus one is two two assigned to x so now x has the value two in it so now we're going to print a two <coughs> we come up two less than 20 yes it is so we increment to three now x has a three we print three three less than 20 it is we increment to four print four four less than four less than 20 am i on four or five i don't know keeps doing the same thing over and over um Let's say we go several iterations forward and we're at 19, right? This one calculated 19. 
so uh, this calculated 19 and so we place 19 into the X we print 19 19 less than 20 yes so now we're gonna say 19 plus 1 is 20 we're gonna assign 20 to the variable X print the 20 and then the very next step we come back up to do the test 20 less than 20 that's false so the condition we'll read it in English as long as the contents of the variable X is less than 20 do these things at this point the contents of the variable X is no longer less than 20 so we do not want to do these things so we're done the loop has broken it didn't really break it failed the condition failed which caused us to break out of the loop all right so let's just let's uh so i can call mine this way because i i wrapped this loop up in a function and that's why i did it so that i could just go through like this and do it. so blah, 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 blah. so we've printed in the loop we went through and printed we started with a one notice X started at zero, right? But we did not print a zero. Why is that? Because the very first time we entered the loop, zero less than 20 was true, so we incremented to one and then printed the one. We didn't print the, we didn't print the contents of the variable X until after it was incremented. So we started at one. And so even though 20, 19, <laughs> when, when X becomes 19, we're going to print 19, 19 less than 20, yes, then this is going to be 20, right? The increment is going to cause 19 to go to 20. We're going to print the 20, and then it's going to fail. And so we, do we see the 20 printed? It did. Okay, so uh, an interesting thing that can happen here is, let's say that print, one someone in, inadvertently does not indent it. So at the, the way I have this written here right now, that print is not a part of the while loop. It's not contained or controlled by the while loop, right? So it's outside it's on the same level as the while so it's this print is just another statement in the function called my function one just like x assign, uh, the initialization of x is the initialization of x is not in the body of the function the body of the function contains only this one line the body of the sorry the loop the body of the function contains three lines one two the while and three, the print. All right, so I'm thinking of this while as a statement that's contained, like this is a statement that's contained, and this is a statement that's contained inside of the function. This function has three, one, two, three. This while loop contains one statement. Okay, so what's going to happen here? when in the world will this what's going to print that's the big question i've got to do this first otherwise my code won't be updated and then i don't know if you guys are aware of this but you can use the up arrow to get your to get your uh, last your last uh command so only a 20 is printing why did that happen well, nothing, the print never occurred. It, it's not that the, the incrementing didn't happen. So be careful when you're trying to analyze what's happening here. It's not that the, the printing, uh, that the incrementing. We started X, we did in fact start X at zero. That's for sure. We do go through the same looping mechanism that we spoke about in the beginning of this, right? At zero less than 20, yes incrementing that's the end of the loop at this point though right so print does not happen this print is not a part of the loop body so we come back up 
One less than 20, yes. Increment it to two. Two less than 20, increment it to three. Three less than 20. So there's no printing happening. The print is not happening because it's not contained in the loop. Finally, the loop fails at 20 and we fall out of the loop, right? So now we can finally execute the third statement in my function one. And we finally now print X after it's all said and done. Don't believe me yet? Let's do something else. I'll put that print back in the body of the loop. And now we have two prints. You know what I'm going to do here? Watch this. Right? When we have fallen out of the loop, we're going to print out of loop. Right? When this stops happening and we move on away from this, the, the next line would be print out of loop. i got to do this first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll do this. So we expect to see 1 through 20 printed and then out of loop. What the heck? Did I? Did I do this button? Did it tell me I have an error? Did I run the right? I don't think I was running the right thing. There we go. I wasn't running the, the right thing. The right command. Because I was using the up arrow key and I, I needed to push it twice to get going again. All right. So there's all my, my, uh, my printout as before. All the way to 20. And then we've fallen out of the loop. Okay. So. Hopefully. I've got a few more uh, examples to, to go through, but I think we'll go much quicker through the rest of them as long as, as long as it's making sense the way this looping mechanism works. What's very important here is that you pay attention, close attention. <laughs> you know how detailed this has to be. It has to be perfect. It's not close does not work. Close will break every time. Perfection is the only thing that works. You need to know precisely where you're going to start the loop precisely where it's going to end and precisely how you're going to get from the start to the end right so those three things be very careful of those three parts Initial, initialization test or the condition the failing condition and then update some way to move forward so let's talk a little bit about that update just for one moment because that that line uh, there are a couple of ways to do that. So let me jump back on there and um, and we'll we'll play around with that one again and then we'll I'll just blow through the next couple uh, of them. So I can I can increment by anything that I want. Okay? Boom. It's analyzing. It's ready. So now we'll come back here. See, that's what I did. I hit it right there before. And that's what I wanted it to do. Um, now we're counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, right? Because each time it, it increments, it increments by two, not by one. It's not called the increment when you're doing it by two. All right, increment means by one. <laughs> All right, and or I could multiply this. I could use multiplication here if I wanted Right, which will be the star. And do that. And whenever I'm ready, do that. Uh-oh. What? Did I, oh, I'm stuck in a loop. Oh, you know why? That's pretty cool that that happened. Now, I had to, I was stuck in an infinite loop right there. And um, in order to get out of it, I had to do Control-C to break the loop. Otherwise, it would just go forever like that. 
It's just doing zero, zero. It's printing zero all the time. Why would it print zero when I'm multiplying? Silliness. It's going to make sense to everyone in a second here. I don't know why it happened to me because I guess I stopped thinking for a moment. X originally, initially, it's initialized at the value zero. I, that's what I set it to initially. So every time we did this multiplication, it was two times zero. I kept putting a zero back in. So it printed a zero. We came back up and tested. Is zero less than 20? Yes, it is. Okay, great then. Let's try to move closer to fail, causing that test to fail. It will say zero times two. It keeps being zero over and over again. Right? But nonetheless, that doesn't, this still worked. So here's a good example of, of something <laughs> that brings up something. There are two kinds of errors that we could have in, in these programs. So there's two kinds of errors. There can be syntax errors, and that is um, you, you, you typed something wrong, and when you click the Run button up in the, the top of the screen, um, you get an error message over on the, the left-hand side, uh, the right-hand side, I'm sorry, and um, it, it's, it can't read. It, let's say you misspelled the word while, <laughs> or you used a capital W instead of a lowercase w. That would be a syntax error, or you forgot the col, right? That would be a syntax error. You, you miss, it's kind of like missing punctuation in English. If you forgot to put the period at the end of a sentence, or you forget to capitalize the first letter. It doesn't mean all the contents of everything else and your logic isn't right. Uh, it just means that you, your syntax is not right. You, you're missing the semicolon, or you're missing a period, or you, you're not using the right case, right? That's one kind of an error that can happen. Those are relatively easy to find. But um, what we just experienced there um, was a logic error. There's nothing syntactically wrong with me multiplying a number by zero. Right? right? That's completely legitimate and logical. I mean, it's exactly, there's nothing mathematically wrong with that. It's allowed. So there's no syntax error with what I wrote there. That was a logic error, right? There was an error in the way I was thinking about it. it. The computer was performing exactly the way I asked it to. I asked it to keep multiplying by zero. It's just that I'm the dummy that said, keep multiplying by zero and thinking that something different is going to happen. That's a logic error. <laughs> Those are, are much more challenging to, to get to the bottom of. So let's move along now. Hopefully that won't happen. It's going to happen to you. Right, but um, just so you can kind of distinguish between those, we really prefer syntax errors. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, the compiler or the interpreter can, can, um, can help us find those. Logic errors, they're kind of insidious. They're hard to find a lot of times. Thankfully, we don't have much code here. So let's get on back here and move on to the next one. So we really... I've modified this um, this print. We real no, okay. We've added to this, so let's just move to the next function. So, what would happen here? Let's look at this one again. What if I did the print first? If I change the order of line four and five, I'm going to swap the orders on here. It's the only thing I'm doing here. That's all I did, right? I'm printing first and then incrementing, instead of incrementing and then printing. Should I change this back? so that we see like the way it was and it's supposed to be one then we print x and, and this line didn't exist originally so let's go ahead and ditch it get rid of that all together so now we're back to where we started right and so the only thing that i've done between the difference between function one and function two is that i, I swapped the the place of these two lines so now print is second. Updates first, print is second was the first way. Now prints first and updates after that. And remember, it's top-down sequential. So how will this cause a difference to anything? I've got to change this to two. Well, now we print zero. Whereas before we didn't, right? 
So what happened is we initialized to zero. Zero less than 20. Yes, in fact, it is. So let's do the body. Print the zero and then increment. Now it's one. X has the value one. Is one less than 20? Yes, it is. Therefore, print one. So and at the end, we do not now print 20, whereas before, before we did, we end on 19. Why is that? Well, we would have printed 18 here, right? When we got to 18, then we would have incremented to 19. 19 less than 20? Yes, it is. Print 19. Now, we're going to increment from 19 to 20. Do the test. 20 less than 20? Fail. We fall out of the loop. So that's why we ended now on 19 instead of on 20. See, the increment happened. We printed just before in, in function one. We printed just before we came around and did the test. Right, The very next thing we were going to do after we printed was test. Here, we're going to print before we increment. So we're going to increment, and then the very next thing we're going to do is test. Right, So it's, it's a very subtle difference, but makes a, a big difference. Let's move on to three. Let's see what we're doing here. Oh, we're, we're going to decrement. All right, so instead of doing x equals x plus 1, I'm going to do x equals x minus 1. That's just another way to count through. All right, so in this case, rather than starting x at 0, I'm going to start x at 10. It's going to fail. It's, truth is going to be as long, just so long as x is greater than zero, right? So now I want to go from 10 to zero. So I'm going the other way. Rather than going from zero to 10, we, in this case, we were going to 20, right? From zero to 20, we're, go, we're moving. So we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. We're going, we're incrementing, we're going up. In this case, I'm starting at 10 and we're going down to zero. And so I need to get from 10 to zero. So I need to decrement, which will be that one, right? And so we're going to be printing all those values. So will we print 10? 10 is greater than zero, print 10. And then we're going to decrement to nine. Nine, we're going to print nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, eight, two. And now we're going to, we're going to decrement to one. So it would be two minus one is one, two. We're going to print Two is greater, well, then one is greater. So we're going to print one, right? And then we're going to decrement one minus one is zero into x. Zero greater than zero, no. So we're going to, the last number we're going to print is one, right? Because when, when x gets changed to zero, that will cause us to fail. Therefore, we'll never get to this line. Okay, let's run it. Function three. One's the last number. We started it at 10. It was 10. 10 was greater than zero. We printed 10. So <laughs> this, this also makes a point. What we really want to do is check the two endpoints. To, to know whether or not we've hit the the loop properly um, in our in our logic here, do we get the first number we wanted to print, and did we did get the last one? And of course, the ones in between are going to work. Right. The question is, did we start right? Did we stop right? Right. Okay. And for the last one here that I wanted to put in this throw in this video. The last looping mechanism, it appears in, in the previous examples that, well, it doesn't appear anything. I have only used in the previous examples one variable, and that's a special variable in the way I've written the code. I'm calling it the loop variable, right? And, and so I gave it the name uh, uh, x. You're gonna have, you can be any variable you want. A lot of times they're i, a lot, whatever. Whatever, there's other ones. There are other variables that people commonly, routinely use. I'm just happy to use x here. All right? But just because I'm using x doesn't mean that's the only variable that I can work with. I may have 
another reason why I want to have another variable. And, and I can have as many variables as I want. It's just that X in this case, as far as this loop is concerned, really because of that condition, X is the important, is the only variable that I can use to control this loop. I have to get X. X has to be initialized and it has to be updated in such a way that will cause this to fail cause this condition to fail any other variables well so what there's other variables right it's that loop variable that I have to be very cautious with so here in this case I, I have a loop my loop variable this time is K I used K okay I know it's the loop variable the controlling loop variable because it's the one in the condition and so we're going to continue looping as long as the value contained in K is less than or equal to 5. Okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. So K is my controlling variable. This is where K, the controlling variable, starts, starting at 0. This is just some other variable that I've created. Right? It doesn't, sum does not control the loop. K is going to be used for that purpose. And I know it because the K is used in the condition and the K is going to need an update. So K is going to be running from zero up, right? We're incrementing from zero. And so we're eventually going to hit, uh, when K takes on the value five, five less than equal to five. Yes. So six is the number when K gets to six, the loop will fail and will fall out. Also note, there's now three statements being controlled by the loop. There could be any number, an infinite number of them. They're all indented underneath of the loop. That's how we know that we're at the loop body and we could put something else out here. Uh-oh. We could put something else. Um, I'm just trying to enter. I'm going to go this way, like a print out here or something, right? Uh, I'm going to print K. And we'll see where K left off after the loop is over. And I can tell you where it's going to leave off. It's going to leave off at 6, right? It, 6 is the first number that will cause this to fail, starting from 0. First number from 0. 6 less than equal to 5, fail. 5 less than equal to 5, true. 4, 3, 2, 1, all less than equal to 5. It's 6 that will cause the failure to happen. So when this loop fails, 6 will print at the end. Okay? We're going to see that. Now, some other stuff's going to print, <laughs> but the 6 I'm looking for is going to happen at the end. So here in the middle... We have this variable sum that we started off at zero. The first time we enter, we're going to, uh, into the variable sum, we're going to place whatever's currently in the variable sum, which at the start of this loop is zero, plus whatever k is. So k happens to be zero at the start. So the very first sum that will print is zero. <laughs> and then on line 25, we're going to increment k. That's the loop variable, right? So k now has the value 1. 1 less than equal to 5, yes. So sum into sum, we want to place. We're going to overwrite what's in sum with whatever this is. Okay? So into sum, place whatever's currently into sum, which is 0 at the moment, plus whatever's in k, which is, because of this, one there's one in k so now sum the variable sum is going to be assigned the value one and then that's going to print okay so um was the very first number we expect to see printed here zero the very first time sum will be zero because sum plus k is going to be 0 plus 0 equals 0. So into sum, we're going to place 0. 
Yeah, I know. It started out that way. So it already had a zero in it. And the very first time we enter this, we're going to place a zero in there again, right on top of the other one. We overwrite. And then each time we loop this, though, k is going to be incrementing. So we're going to, we're going to keep adding whatever's in k to the sum and we're overwriting what used to be in sum. Right? Let's, should we just run it and see what we've got going on here? Let's do it. Four. Okay. So I might want to leave that up to you guys to, to see why, how in the world those numbers come out. Well, zero, we already specified what zero was going to be. Oh, you know what? I, I put this, I, you know what just threw me off? I, I don't see the last K being printed. And that's because I wrote this line in here on line 26 and I didn't push the play. All right, so let's let this finish and then we'll do that same run all over again and we'll see what K is at the end. So K... K had the value 6. What this is saying is K had the value 6. See it right here? When the loop failed, because that's what it printed when we're out of the loop. All right, so that must have caused the loop to fail, and that's what we would expect to see happen. 6 is not less than or equal to 5. All right, but what is this doing? What is this program doing? Why don't you think about that? You guys think about that for a little bit and see what you think this thing is doing in particular this number right here <laughs> all right i think that this video has turned into something that's very long <laughs> i think is, uh, i don't want to saturate you too much why don't you play around with um with uh, some loops a little bit Remember that if you get stuck in a loop, you could do control C to break the loop. It's likely you're going to get stuck in a loop because it happens to everyone, especially when you're just learning how to do loops. All right. And so you play around with, with some of these examples, see if you can modify some things and um, kind of make it work out for you in some other way. And the next video, we'll talk about the for loop, which is very similar to the while loop. There are some differences that they need to be pointed out um, but they're they're very very similar uh, same kind of looping concept uh, and it still needs those same three things initialization update and test um, but we'll so we'll talk about that one in the next video i don't want to go too far all right good luck